It is a strong moving force. The mass movement of Earth propelled by gravity. Rocks fall and debris slide, carried along in heavy flowing mud, demolishing and burying everything in their path, leaving in their wake a trail of complete destruction. In this feature, we will take a look at the phenomenon of landslides and examine the effects on man and the environment. If we take a look into the past, we see that there are no regions in the world that have not experienced landslides, sometimes with major consequences. Ranked as the seventh biggest killer among natural disasters, landslides have wiped out entire villages. On a yearly basis, landslides take approximately 700 lives. Landslides can also be costly disasters. They can cause billions of dollars in economic losses, from damage to physical infrastructure, buildings, forests and agricultural lands. The worst recorded landslide in history is the 1920 Kansu landslide in China, near the border of Tibet. An earthquake triggered massive landslides of dry, rocky mountainsides and lowest banks. Loess is created from fine dust and is very susceptible to slides and mud flows. When the landslides were triggered, all the cliffs and the thousands of cliffside cave dwellings and hundreds of small towns and tiny villages fell into valleys below. Over 180,000 people were killed. Today, that day is still known as Shanzo Lao or when the mountains walked. Closer to our part of the world, in St. Lucia during 1938, a combination of three landslides within the neighboring areas of Ravine Ekrevis and Ravine Poisson resulted in what was described as a sea of mud. 60 people died in these landslides, another 32 persons were injured, evacuations were ordered, resulting in the displacement of over 500 people. This landslide disaster was one of the worst ever experienced in the Eastern Caribbean. In Venezuela, continuous rainfall at the end of 1999 soaked the hillsides where ad hoc vegetation existed. This triggered thousands of landslides and debris flows onto the coastal plains. The number of people who lost their lives in this disaster is still not definite, but could be as high as 20,000. Then in 2004, damages amounting to millions of dollars were recorded as landslides triggered by torrential rain occurred in various parts of Tobago. While not all landslides that occur may be of this magnitude, their effects can be quite devastating and traumatic. So what causes land to slide? A landslide is essentially the downslope movement of rock or soil under the influences of gravity. Once a slope is present, the force of gravity on the mass of the slope creates an activating force. When this force pulls in the direction of the slope to overcome the frictional forces that keep the mass attached to the slip surface, a landslide results. What we tend to find is that these landslides are fairly common in hilly areas. So this is what we'll notice in Northern Trinidad, where we have very steep hills, these failures are common through the central part of Trinidad, Southern Trinidad. Everywhere you have steep hills, common in Tobago. Um, the rock types, as well as the, the steepness of the slope, encourages it. And what we tend to find is that all the islands going up into the Lesser Antilles have very steep slopes, and they are all old vol volcanic ashes and so on. That when they are altered by weathering become weak and with the heavy rainfall that we get sometimes it would encourage slopes to fail. While the word landslide may conjure images of rocks pelting down a hill or mountain, this is not entirely true. A landslide can be any movement of land, fast or slow, under the influence of gravity. We call a number of things landslides. It can range from processes that occur will take place over a long period of time, over a few minutes. The slowest one would be soil creep. This is where the soil actually moves down a hillside over 20, 30 years. What happens is that a lot of soils have 
clays in them, when our clays get wet, they expand, and when they get dry, they shrink. That's why you see soils cracking. Now on a slope like this, they, when the soils get wet, they would expand outwards like this, and when it shrinks, it goes vertically downwards because of gravity. And through time, you basically go down in a series of step-like motions. So that is why you see in areas that aren't very steep, people's walls lean and like that. Now, the other one we have would be two things. One which you call slumps, and the other one are slides. Other types of landslides include lateral spreads, which occur on flat terrain or gently sloping land. Falls, which is when rock and soil abruptly detach from a slope and move quickly to a new resting place. Or flows, which are most familiar to us in the Caribbean. These occur when the earth has been soaked with water, causing surface soil, loose rocks and debris to move in a viscous to fluid-like motion. Earthquakes are also a major cause of slides on land, as they can create stresses that weaken slopes. The slide of rocks and soil downhill under the influence of gravity is a natural process known as mass movement. But when this occurs suddenly, it is called landslides. There are many natural triggers to landslides. Ongoing erosion by rivers and ocean waves may wear down slopes, creating very steep gradients that are prone to sliding. And, as has been the Caribbean experience, heavy and prolonged rains can saturate rock and burden the soil to cause landslides. In 2004, Tropical Storm Jean lashed the island of Haiti with heavy rainfalls, wreaking havoc and causing landslides. In areas of volcanic activity too, eruptions that spew ash may cause debris avalanches or mud flows. And there are also areas where landslides are likely to occur simply because the type of soil is prone to sliding. So earthquakes, rainfall, volcanic eruptions and soil type are some of the key natural conditions that trigger landslides. But what are some other triggers? There are man-made ones, as people in the quest to develop land resources alter the physical environment. In developing countries, forests and hillsides have become prime areas for economic activity. The destruction of natural forests through logging, quarrying and mining and improper agricultural practices all create conditions that promote the risk of landsliding. Poor drainage systems can set the stage for landslides. Construction can change the gradient of the land and excavations to build houses, factories and roads can weaken slopes. So we see that landslides can be devastating but we are not entirely helpless against their onslaught. And although not much can be done to stop the natural conditions that cause landslides, measures may be taken to safeguard against losses. Some islands have undertaken hazard land mapping exercises, which pinpoint areas where landslides are likely to occur. Factors that are incorporated into landslide maps include topography, watercourses or rivers, rainfall distribution and wind direction on wave action on coastal lands. Using these maps, planners can categorize areas that are unsafe for development. As we know, landslides occur more prevalently on slopes above a certain, say, 30 degrees or more. And one of the things that we can do to prevent um, these occurrences from impacting us is restricting A, the number of structures that go on steep slopes, and B, building on these slopes any at all. And this is where our regulatory authorities, such as the Town and Planning Authority, come into play, and our local government authorities. They will be able to regularize and to determine what type of structures will go on what type of surfaces. The maintenance of slopes is also crucial to preventing landslides. Slopes can be drained of water or retaining walls can be constructed to stop soil slippage. Our history has shown very poor practices um, throughout the Caribbean region um, when we build on slopes. 
especially when we cut roads. When you go and cut a road, one should ensure that the land above is stabilized before you continue. Because what has happened is that the arbitrary cutting of the hillside, the non-shoring up of these slopes has led to the landslides. So as we cut, we should ensure that we have retaining walls, other embankments that will hold the hillsides from collapsing. Farming on hillsides is also another aspect that we can look at. Farmers should ensure that when they plant, they utilize such measures as terracing or contouring, where they plant along the contours of the hillside and you do put in proper drainage. So therefore, you don't expose the slope to additional stresses from heavy rainfall or when you do have, uh, say, an earthquake. And that will greatly reduce the possibility of landslides. Surface slips can also be stopped by planting vegetation and in case where forests have been destroyed, programs of reforestation can be initiated to replant deep-rooted trees and vegetation. However, there is sometimes a misconception with the types of vegetation that can mitigate against landslide disasters. Some vegetation can actually invoke landslides in two ways. Invasive roots penetrating soft rock may allow intrusion of subsurface water. And large tree canopies can cause loosening of soil at the roots during wind loading. The design of homes and the design of bridges or roads is also another element. So this guides how we put down the physical structure. Once we properly design the structure, taking into consideration the landslide risk, we are able then to reduce the impact or reduce the occurrence of landslides. That is very significant because sometimes we can't reduce the impact or reduce the frequency. But what can be done is to build, so build a structure that it can withstand the impact of a landslide. Proper, proper public education is another key element. Many persons, unfortunately, building areas which are prone to landslides because they do not have the knowledge or the information that they are building in a vulnerable area. We have seen with good information in the public, it will help to reduce the number of buildings and structures that can be put there. We certainly want to encourage also that when persons are building in these areas that they seek out the information and to have that information provided on a readily available basis in a form that is easily understood by the public is very important. In this region where we have just very limited land resources and increasing population and demands for use of land from all quarters many stakeholders in that, in that. Um, it really doesn't make sense for any amount of land to be destroyed in any way you know and it can be prevented we can identify areas which are susceptible to land slipping and we can take appropriate measures to 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 treat that problem and to you know, make alternative use of that, of that site. So while the development of our towns and cities is inevitable and ongoing, careful planning and development, the implementation of policies and the enforcement of building codes for the creation of communities are necessary. Where we build and how we build will certainly go a long way to reducing the impact of landslides.